Now when it comes to installing Windows, I need a copy of Windows. So I have to have some medium that has Windows on it. And I can do this in two ways. I can do either a clean installation or I can do an in-place upgrade. Let's talk about the clean installation first. So a clean install means what it sounds like. I'm going to wipe the system clean, take away all my data, all of my programs, everything, and just put on a clean operating system. In order to do that, I need something bootable. I need to boot to a DVD or boot to a USB drive, something that is bootable outside of my system. I can't boot to my system if it doesn't have an operating system on it. Now there are different ways that I can get a hold of that. I can purchase it off the shelf in a box, for example. I can purchase it online and get a download or a box. Or I can create an ISO file, which then I can burn to a DVD or a USB. There's something called the Media Creation Tool in both Windows 10 and Windows 11 that you can use to create that DVD or USB or you can just keep it as an ISO file. Let's take a look at that for the Windows 10 website. So in order to find this site, I just went to Google and typed download Windows 10. And this is a Microsoft site and I have two options here. I can just click update now. That would do an in-place upgrade right now. Or I can create that medium. I can click this download now which installs the media creation tool. Let's take a look at it. Okay, here's the media creation tool. First I have to accept the license agreement. And now I have a couple of options. I can just upgrade this PC now, which pretty much acts just like this link up here, update now. Or I can create an installation media. That is to say a USB flash drive or a DVD. What's going to happen if I choose that option is it will download an ISO file first and then burn that to a USB or DVD as a bootable drive. But the important thing here is that if I'm doing a clean install, I must have something to boot to. I can't boot to an ISO file directly on my machine. I could on a virtual machine. That's a whole other story. But I need a USB or a DVD. Now over on the Windows 11 download site, you have other options. You have the installation assistant, which is the same as we had on Windows 10 for the upgrade. And then you have the media creator, which can create either a USB or DVD that are bootable, or it will actually create just an ISO file. And it also has that extra button that can do what this button does up here, run the update directly. You also have a third option on the Windows 11 site, and that is a multi-edition ISO. You might use that if you're going to bring up a virtual machine or you have a key for a specific edition of Windows, and so you want to install that. You need to have that on your medium. That's what this multi-edition ISO is for. Although you can create an ISO, a regular ISO, up here off of this media creation tool. So there we have it for a clean install. For a clean install, you have to boot to something else and then load Windows from that. Now you can, by the way, if you have an ISO file, use CD Burner XP, Image Burn, or one of those third party free pieces of software to burn it to a DVD, then make a bootable copy. If it's a USB drive, actually, uh, a tool called Rufus is a free tool that you can use to create a bootable USB drive. Uh, these two up here will do a DVD drive. By the way, if you're downloading a copy of the ISO that has both 32 and 64 bit on it, you're going to need a larger drive, such as an eight gigabyte disk or USB. Now the big difference for an upgrade, even though most of it is the same, you still have a medium such as a DVD or USB, although you can use an ISO file for an upgrade. Because the difference here is that for an upgrade, you don't boot to that media. You actually are already in your Windows system and you simply navigate to the setup exe file on that medium and run it from within your system. Let's take a look at that. Here I've used 
file explorer to get to where I have an ISO file sitting here and it doesn't do me any good as an ISO file. An ISO file is just an image of a DVD. So I'm going to right click that and I can mount that as a virtual disk. I actually have another piece of software that I use on here all the time, select drive letter and mount that I can use and I'll make an O drive for example. So now I have an O drive. You can't see it here. Let's see if I can get you to where you can see it. There we go. I now have an O drive. And if I click it, you can see that one of the files I have there is the setup.exe. So if I'm going to do an upgrade, I can now run directly off of this setup.exe. Now it's the same file that runs when you boot from this DVD and um, it does a clean install but it does different things depending on where you launch it from. So really that's the only difference for an upgrade install is that you're going to not boot to the drive and go directly within your system to the setup.exe. One little hack is that you can actually run an in-place upgrade and still get a clean install by answering no, don't keep anything as you do an upgrade and it will essentially do a clean install for you.